Hey guys, today we're going to talk about hydration, one of my favorite topics. Mm. No, not that kind of hydration. So today we're going to talk about axe and tomahawk maintenance. I am not an expert. I'm going to get that out of the way right now. But over the years, I've had people ask me how I maintain my hawks and how I maintain my axes, saws, and things like that. And um, yeah, I'm not an expert. This is what works for me. Take it for what it is. It's free advice. And also, I'd like to throw this disclaimer out there. Always follow your manufacturer's suggested care and maintenance. All right? That's it. That's the disclaimer. Basically, with the seasonal changes, what you're going to have is changes in humidity that can cause some cause some problems for us. Those problems are going to basically manifest in rust with with uh, humidity building up on the head causing rust. Also with the tomahawk the change in humidity can cause us some handle fitment issues. Okay so if you're going to store it in the house where you've got dry heat the handle can shrink. If you're going to store it out in the garage, the handle can swell and you're going to have a problem with your handle fitment. In extreme cases, you can actually have warping and cracking of the handle. Um, with proper preventive maintenance and establishing good habits of never putting away wet tools, we can prevent some of these issues. issues. And proper preventive maintenance, maintenance is what I'm talking about when I talk about uh, hydration. So let's get going with this. I want to keep this fairly short. Um, first thing, let's get into some good habits. When you take your trip and have some fun, when you come back, you should bring in, uh, I don't know, let's look at these as like our sensitive items, okay? <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring our, our hard tools in and we'll put them in a safe place out of the pack where they can dry, take the sheaths off, if that's safe to do in your household, and let them dry. You know, you're not going to leave your deer rifle in the sheath after you've been out walking around in the snow soaking wet because you know it's going to rust and that's not a good got not a good deal. It's the same thing with your axes, your knives, your saws. So get in a good habit of that. Don't leave the sheaths on because the sheaths, will, they will trap and hold moisture and that's not a good thing. So, what we're going to do for our preventive maintenance, we're going to establish good habits, and then the next thing, when we're going to actually either bring them out of storage or put them into storage, is we're going to clean them. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Remove any foreign debris. Um, you can accomplish that. Again, back to the disclaimer, however the manufacturer states, myself personally, just use a damp rag, wipe anything off of here, we're looking to get some the dirt off of here. We're looking to get plant matter, bark. Well, with this particular axe, where you have this little phantom bevel, dirt and bark and stuff likes to build up down in here, sharp edges, up by where the handle goes through, down in here, you get bark. You want to get all that crap out of there because it'll hold moisture and we don't want that. So, clean everything up real good. With the tomahawk, it's the same thing. We want to clean everything really well. And with the tomahawk, We'll go ahead and disassemble that for cleaning and for uh, preventive maintenance purposes. We'll go ahead and just disassemble it, clean it out really good. With the saw, it's the same basic thing. Big saw like this or small folding saw, same basic thing. You want to clean it. I suggest a stiff nylon bristled brush. Get up in here, get that cleaned out, get your teeth cleaned out, Your all your mechanical parts and pieces. You don't want anything in there that's going to hold moisture. Okay, so we're going to get it clean and then we're going to uh, hydrate everything. So with the axe, what I prefer to use myself is boiled linseed oil. Put boiled linseed oil on the on the handle, let it dry, apply another coat if it'll take it. If it doesn't take it, then wipe the excess off and let it dry. There are probably as many different ways of doing this as there are axes out there. 
Um, this is just the way I do it. There's the once a day, every day for a week, once a week, or for a month, uh, you, you know, that whole thing. Basically, the density of your wood is going to dictate how much it's going to take to saturate it. And I like to reach the saturation point on all my handles because it's going to in increase the density of the handle and that is what keeps moisture from from getting into the wood okay so uh, okay that was a mouthful so anyways we're going to apply our boiled linseed oil make sure that you pay good attention to the top keep that wedge nice and tight in there and make sure you get around where the head is up in here paying good attention to your end grain okay so we've cleaned it we've let it dry then we apply our boiled linseed oil Make sure I, I didn't miss, you didn't miss that. We're going to clean it, everything that we're cleaning, and then make sure it's dry before you go on to the next step, okay? Same thing with the tomahawk. The tomahawk, we don't use the boiled linseed oil. We're going to use butcher block conditioner on the handle. I don't like using boiled linseed oil. You can certainly use it. Myself personally, though, I use butcher block conditioner. It's a little bit thinner. It's all natural. It's food safe. Not that it's a huge deal, but I find that the buildup of the boiled linseed oil can affect the fit to a certain degree. I just prefer the butcher block conditioner for my tomahawk handles. That's just me. Now with the tomahawk, we want to make sure that we oil the inside of the eye just as well as we oil the outside. And for long-term storage, I suggest that you store the head separate from the handle. Because this doesn't fit as tight as an, of an, of, that an axe, because this doesn't fit as tight as an axe, there is the chance for condensation to form between the head and the handle. So I usually store mine um, loose. If you do get rust and you do get swelling of the handle, it can be a real bear to get the head off. So that's that. Now on to the saw. So we've cleaned it, we've dried it. Now the handle, same basic deal, boiled linseed oil. Mine is actually lacquered still. Usually on my axes I will take the lacquer finish off, but on the saw I'm not worried about getting blistered. So until this comes off on its own I'll probably leave it but when it does I will use boiled linseed oil on this and for the metal you can use um, oil or what I prefer to use is silicone spray you spray this on wipe it down and let it dry and it dries uh, kind of a slick coating it's water resistant and it's slick um, it's not. It doesn't gum up like some some oils can in cold weather. That's my preference. You can certainly use the same oil that you use on your axe and tomahawk head. By the way, the oil that I use is CLP. If anybody wants to know, any light oil or heavy oil, any oil you want to use on the metal will probably work. I've used everything from motor oil, transmission fluid, Marvel Mystery oil, CLP. You name it. Okay, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. It's really simple stuff. It's just a matter of going through and doing it. And if you have a collection like I do, this is a portion of my collection. My rotation is pretty slow. Some of these axes don't see a lot of use, so it's very important that I keep keep them well maintained. Um, a good good thing to do also is to keep them sharpened, keep the polish on the edge because a polished edge will resist rust better than a non-polished edge, okay? Uh, let's see, what did we leave out? Um, how about the sheaths? Basically the sheaths are really simple. Um, if you've got a plastic sheath, keep it clean, keep it dry. If you have a leather sheath, sheath there's a few things that you'll want to know. Uh, manufactured sheath, homemade sheath, it doesn't really matter. Same as the uh, as the hardware. Clean it and let it dry. Uh, again, a stiff bristled brush to brush off any gunk, mud, bark, residue, get the inside cleaned off. 
And then if you have some real bad stuff that's ground into the leather, you can use a damp or moist cloth to wipe it and clean it. And then let it dry. And a cautionary note on drying. If you force dry leather, it can become hard, brittle, and crack, or warp, or shrink. So it's best to let leather dry kind of at its own pace, naturally. Don't force it. But it is very important to let leather dry because it can mold and it can hold moisture for a very long time and that will transfer to your tomahawk or axe and cause rusting. So for me, clean it, let it dry, pull any of your little accoutrements out, make sure that it dries. What I usually do is, is unflap it, clean it, and then prop it up somewhere so that it gets good circulation, something like this. You lay it flat like this, the air's not going to circulate as well. Prop it open, and then maybe stick something inside just to wedge it open so it gets good circulation. Pretty simple stuff. As far as sealing it, what I use is snow seal. Brush it on while it's warm. Maybe use um, a uh, hair dryer or a heat gun at a fair distance away. Do not overheat the leather or it will crack if you're not careful or shrink. But just, just barely, just warm it up a little bit and this stuff will just melt right into the leather. Inside, outside, everywhere you can get. Let it sink into the leather really good and then I just buff it off. And it, it usually does a really good job protecting the leather. So that's about it. I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Pretty simple stuff. But I know everybody's um, everybody's at their own level. There's a lot of guys getting into it, and they just kind of want to ask the question, you know, how you take care, how we take care of our stuff. So if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to to ask. I know I went through this pretty quick. I just want to keep the video short. I have a tendency to ramble on. So I think I covered it all. Stay safe. Practice your skills. Leave a comment, leave a suggestion. Constructive criticism is always welcome. That's how we learn. Until next time, guys. See ya.